Welcome back to day two of math, everyone. Um, today we are going to build on what we went over with our rounding and our place values, especially our place values, and take a look at the first of our four functions, addition and subtraction. We will look at multiplication and division tomorrow, and then we will put the whole thing together um, by looking at order of operations, or PEMDAS. For now, we're just going to focus on our first two functions. And we'll start with addition. First, some vocabulary that you should know when we talk about addition. Um, the add-ins are the two numbers that you're adding together. So if I asked you, what is three plus five? Three and five are your add-ins. The sum is the answer to the actual addition problem. So three plus five is eight. Eight is your sum. Some things to remember when we talk about addition. Hopefully, most of this will be review, and that's a good thing. Um, you should always remember to line up your numbers according to their place value. And that's why we spent, you know, a whole lecture making sure that you're comfortable with place value. So what do we mean by line up your numbers according to place value? One of these problems should look good to you and one of these problems should make you twitch a little bit. When I say line up your numbers according to place value, you want to make sure that your ones are in the ones column, your tens are in the tens column. So if we look at our number, our problem on the left here, both the six and the one are in the ones place in their respective numbers. The 1,456 has six in the ones place, 781 has one in the ones place. Um, five and eight are both in the tens place, four and seven are in the hundreds place, and then it, only one number has a number in the thousands place, and that's our one and 1,456. This contrasted to our number on the right. Um, here we see both the six and the one are still in the ones position in their respective numbers, but because we've set up the problem incorrectly, the one here that is in the ones place in this number is actually written in the tens column. So when we add 781 to 1456, instead of adding one to six and getting seven, like we should, we're going to wind up adding one to five and, and pretending like that one is actually a 10 and getting 60 um, instead of the seven that we should. So make sure that your place value is nice and neat and organized, that your numbers are lined up properly. Um, don't do this. Graph paper can be very, very helpful here if you're having trouble keeping your numbers lined up. Um, I strongly recommend getting it, um, put your numbers down in each tiny little box, channel your inner type A personality. It can be very, very helpful. Or at the very least, you can take your uh, lined notebook paper and turn your page sideways and then write your numbers in those little columns um, that you get when you turn your paper sideways. Either way will help you stay organized and organization is probably 50% of the battle when it comes to getting your math right. So with that said, let's go over a few examples and make sure that we're all on the same page. I recommend stopping these when I move to a new problem, try them on your own, and then play the video and we'll go over them together. So let's start here, 5,712 plus 233. Always start adding over here in the ones column. So two plus three is five, one plus three is four. If you have to count on your fingers, I won't judge. Seven plus two is nine, and then we have five. Pretty straightforward. Okay. Um, how do we know if that's right? Besides plugging it into your calculator, how do you know if it's right? How do we check an addition problem? Well, the opposite of addition is subtraction. So to check this problem, we are gonna take our answer, our sum, 5,945, and we can subtract one of our two add-ins and get the other. Um, ideally, you wanna use the smaller of the two add-ins just because it'll be simpler. So if we subtract 233, five minus three is two, four minus three is one, nine minus two is seven, and then we have five all by his lonesome, we should get the second addend. And that's how we know that we did our problem correctly. Now I do strongly recommend take the five seconds and punch this in on your calculator and double check there as well. Um, but you know, if it's, I don't know, 
the zombie apocalypse and you have no calculator, this is how you would double check your math. Let's look at a couple more examples. Again, um, take a minute, stop the video, try the problems on your own, and then we'll go over them together. Um, it's good practice for you. So here we have two slightly bigger numbers. 145,349 plus 32,403. Our numbers all, are all not lined up nice and neatly in their respective place value columns. So let's begin, starting on the far right. Um, 9 plus 3 is 12. We'll write down the 2 in our 1's place. Right, We get 12. 2's in the 1's place. 1 is in the 10's place. We'll write down our 2 and carry our 1 over next door on top of this 4 here. And then we'll add that whole column together. 1 plus 4 is 5, 4 plus 0 is, or, sorry, 1 plus 4 is 5, 5 plus 0 is 5. Always double check your math. Okay, next row, 3 plus 4 is 7. You can add a comma there if you like. It's good practice to keep your numbers nice and organized. Um, 5 plus 2 is also 7, 4 plus 3 is also 7, and then we have our 1. Again, you should be able to subtract, um, do 177,752 minus 32,403. You should get that 145,349 um, in order to double check your answer. Plug it into a calculator as well, and make sure that you did it properly. Let's look at one more example and then we'll jump into subtraction. So you have even bigger numbers here, 199,895 plus 2,563. So again, starting from the far right, 5 plus 3 is 8. And then we have 9 plus 6, which is 15. We will write down the 5 in the 1's place and carry the 1 that's in the 10's place. And then we have 8 plus 1, which is 9, and then 9 plus 5, which will give us 14. Write down the 4 in the 1's place, carry the 1 in the 10's place. Um, and then we have 9 plus 1, which is 10. 10 plus 2 is 12. Add our little comma. Write down the 2 and carry the 1. We have 1 plus 9 again, which is 10. So we'll write down our 0, carry our 1, and then 1 plus 1, which is 2. Something to point out. Make sure whenever you're carrying numbers that you're actually writing them in there. Please don't try and do this in your head. There's so much other stuff to worry about. Um, write, write down everything that you do. Don't skip any steps. So take a minute and plug that into your calculator. Do 199, 895 plus 2563. Double check your work. Always get in the habit of double checking your work and see if you got the right answer. So some basic things to remember when we talk about addition, um, like I said, line up your numbers according to their place value. Make sure they're nice and, nice and neat and in a row. Um, always write down the numbers that you carry, like I just said. Don't try and hold them in your head. And double check everything. Double check it as if your life depended on it. Every time you don't double check your work, I don't know, a puppy dies. You don't want to be responsible for the death of a puppy. Double check your work. Okay, moving on to subtraction, the opposite of addition. Some vocabulary that you should know for subtraction. Um, the menu end is the larger number that you're subtracting in your subtraction problem. From it, you are subtracting the subtrahend, which is the smaller number. Um, you don't really need to know these. Now you just can sound really smart. Um, the difference, this is a word you should know, the difference is the answer to your subtraction problem. So just like the sum was the answer to your addition problem, the difference is the answer to your subtraction problem. Some more stuff to keep in mind when you're subtracting, line your numbers up based on their place value. Make sure that all the ones are in the ones column, the tens are in the tens column, etc. And then the number that is worth more should be on top in your problem. This is different than addition. In addition, we could do 123 plus 45. Or we could do 45 plus 123. And either of these are, are correct, and either one will get you the same answer. This is not the case in subtraction. So if we have 
two problems here, 5,278 minus 521 or 521 minus 5,278. Um, one of these is correct, this guy here, because our minuend, our larger number is on top. This one, you're actually going to get a negative answer. If you plug this into your calculator, your calculator should tell you you got a negative answer there. So pay careful attention to that when you're setting up your subtraction problems to do them by hand because you don't want any negative answers. There will, you will never get a negative answer to anything um, in this class. So if you do and you check in on your calculator and your answer is negative, um, go back and look at something. Something went wrong somewhere. Okay, let's look at a couple of examples for subtraction. We'll see a few more examples here than with addition because um, subtraction, I find, kind of makes some of my students a little nervous. So, um, just like addition, we're going to start subtraction in the far right column, in the ones column. And the first thing we're going to do here is see what is 2 minus 5. Um, well, we cannot subtract 5 from 2. If you have $2, I can't come to you and say, give me $5. I mean, maybe from the IRS, I can. But um, as it is right now, I cannot wring $5 out of you if all you have are two. So I'm going to have to go next door to the six and borrow from the six, pull one out of the six to make him a five, bring that one over here to the two, and now I have 12. And this I can subtract. Um, our number on the top always has to be bigger than the number on the bottom when we're subtracting. If it's not, we have to go borrow. So 12 minus 5 will give us 7. Move over to our next column. Now we have 5 minus 7, but we can't subtract 7 from 5. So again, we're going to go, multi we're going to go borrow from our um, neighbor, from our 3. Um, our 3 will become a 2. We'll pull one out of the three and bring it over to the five to make 15. And now we can um, subtract from there. We can do um, 15 minus seven, which should give us eight. Moving on, now we have two minus six. Um, two is smaller than six, we can't subtract that. So we're going to borrow again. Everybody's going next door to their neighbor. Borrow from the five right next door. The five becomes a four. Carry your one over to make our two into a 12. And now we have 12 minus six. 12 minus six is six. Bring down your little comma when we get to it. Um, now we have four minus four. I realize this is getting a little out of alignment. I'm sorry. Four minus four is zero. And then we have four and one over here with nothing here. Essentially what we have here is two zeros. So those we can just bring down. So our final answer is 140,687. How do we know if we did this correctly? How do we double check? Well, we add 140,687 to 4,675. And that will give us, let me see, 12, 16, 13, 5, four and one will give us our minuend, what we started with. Um, of course, you can also plug it into a calculator as well to double check um, your work. Okay, right, let's look at another example. This one, slightly smaller numbers. Go ahead and pause the video. Try this one on your own. Write it out, do it by hand. Don't plug it into a calculator. And then start the video back up and we'll take a look together. So 14,538 minus 3,686. We start on the far right, eight minus six, which is two. And then we have three minus eight. We can't take eight away from three. So we have to go borrow from the five. He'll become a four. And we put the one that we borrowed by our three to make him 13. So now we have eight minus 13, which is five. Um, here we have 4 minus 6. We cannot subtract 6 from 4, so we'll go borrow from that 4. He becomes a 3. Our 4 becomes 14. So now we have 14 minus 6, which is 8. In your little comma. 3 minus 3 is 0, and our 1 doesn't have anything to subtract, so he's just 1. So our answer is 10,852.
go ahead, try to add that to 3,686. Make sure your answer is right. Um, or plug it into your calculator and double check. We're going to look at a couple examples of a problem, problem type that usually gives some of my students issues because it's a little more technical than what we just saw. So here we have 12,004 minus 586. We'll start in the right hand column like we normally would, 4 minus 6, and we can't subtract 4 from 6, so we have to borrow. Um, but where are we going to borrow? Can we borrow from our neighbor? Can we borrow from zero? Take something away from zero? But we can't borrow from zero. If I need money and I come to you and I'm like, man, give me some money, and you're like, I don't have any money. I can't get money from you. Um, so in the same way, we can't borrow from our zero. So we're going to have to skip over our zeros and come all the way over to the very first number that's not zero that we find. And in that case, it's our two right here. So we're going to borrow from that two. He becomes a one. Now, where I see a lot of issues is my students will do this and say, okay, he becomes a one, he becomes a 14. But we can't just skip over our zeros like that because they know that you are out looking for something to borrow. Just like people when they find out you got money. So now that they know you have something worthwhile, they want a piece of the action too. So instead of skipping all the way over to the four, we have to turn this first zero here into a 10. And then we're going to borrow from that 10, turn him into a nine, and turn our neighboring zero into a 10. So he gets a piece of the action as well. Then we're going to borrow from that 10, turn him into a nine, and our four will become a 14. Now we can subtract. Um, not only can we subtract 14 minus six, but those two nines there, we don't have any zeros anymore to worry about. So we, we've kind of covered all of our bases. So 14 minus six will give us eight. Then we have nine minus eight, which is one. Nine minus five, which is four, add your little comma. Um, one minus nothing is one, and then one again in our 10 thousandths place. So we wind up with one, 11,418. Um, and as always, you should be able to add um, that 586 to your problem and get what we started with. Go ahead and try that or plug it into your calculator and double check your work. Let's look at another example. So here we have 302,004 minus 45,678. We'll start in our ones column, four minus eight. And of course we cannot take eight away from four. So we're going to have to come all the way over to our two in the thousands column here to borrow. Our two will become a one. Now remember, both of those zeros want a piece of the action as well. So our first zero here is gonna become a 10. The one that we borrowed from the two will come over to that zero. Now we're gonna borrow from our 10, he becomes a nine, and our next zero becomes a 10. Then we're gonna borrow again from that 10, he becomes a nine again, and our four becomes a 14. Now we can go ahead and subtract. 14 minus eight is six, nine minus seven is two, nine minus six is three, there's a little comma. Now we have one minus five. We can't subtract that, so we're going to have to borrow again, this time going all the way over to our three, the first number that we find that we can borrow from. Three will become a two, and we got to bring that one over to the zero to turn them into a 10 so that we can then borrow for our one. Borrow from the 10, he becomes a nine, and our one becomes 11. From here, we'll go ahead and subtract. 11 minus five will give us six. Nine minus four is five, and then our two is by himself, so he just becomes a two. So we get 256,326. And as always, go ahead, plug that into your calculator, double check it, make sure that um, your answer is correct. One more example, looking at borrowing across a row of zeros. So 201,003 minus 54,254. 
I'm starting our ones column. We have three minus four, and we cannot subtract four from three. So we have to go borrow this time from our one right here. He'll become a zero. And the one that we pulled out of there will go to our first zero to make it a 10. Now we have to borrow from that 10. He becomes a nine and our second zero becomes a 10. Now we have to borrow from him. He'll become a nine again and that three will become 13. Now we can subtract 13 minus four is nine. We have nine minus five, which is four, and then nine minus two, which is seven. Um, here we are, we're back at our, our thousands column where we have a zero now. We're gonna have to go all the way over to our two, borrow from the two, he becomes a one, that zero becomes a 10, and then we borrow from our 10, make him nine, and our zero becomes a 10 again. Um, now we can finish our subtraction. 10 minus four will give us six, 9 minus 5 is 4, and 1 minus nothing is 1. So 146,749. As always, go ahead, plug that into your calculator. Take a minute, either add um, or do your subtraction and make sure that your answer was correct. So some things to remember for your subtraction. Um, always line up your numbers, just like we talked about with addition. Um, always write down when you're borrowing numbers. This is particularly important. Don't try to do this in your head. Just like you should be writing down when you're carrying numbers in addition, write down when you borrow numbers in subtraction. Um, and then remember these are particularly important. You cannot borrow from zero. And you also cannot skip over zero if you borrow. So if you are borrowing across a row of zeros, make sure that you go one step at a time back to the number you're going to. And then of course, double check everything, plug everything into your calculator, um, go over it very quickly, make sure that all of your answers are correct. Like I said, hopefully this was mostly review. If you have questions or would like to go over any of your problems or um, just wanna clear anything up, go ahead and drop by office hours or send me an email and we can set something up together. Um, I'd love to see you there. Otherwise, good luck with the homework.